Hello everyone, this is Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am the co-host DeSoto Brown, I am the Bishop Museum Historian, and joining us from Germany is the host of this program, who is Martin Despang, speaking to us via Skype. Martin, good day to Hello. you. And there he is up on the screen. So today we've got uh, kind of a playful program and this is called Crazy Cantilevered Canopies and we're talking about canopies, roof canopies, overhangs, things like that that were in many cases in mid-century period treated very interestingly and we're going to bring it up of course to the modern day as well so Martin why don't you get us started and tell us what our first program on our first uh, image is. Good to talk to you DeSoto and the audience so I'm uh Tuning in from Germany again, as you said, I moved back to the south of Germany, which is uh, climatically certainly the most coldest part here. And so, um, you know, at times you can't even survive wearing a winter coat. You got to go inside, inside of your building with thick walls. Right. And when I came to Hawaii, I recognized that's not the case. You can be comfortable. And I started to discover the most comfortable space and place to be is actually under a tree. And Correct. if we can get uh, picture number one for that. And this is a special tree here that was brought to the islands, wasn't native to it. This is a monkey putt tree. And just look at the geniosity of nature, how it starts on a single spot and then branches out crazy, as we call the show. I mean, this is a crazy cantilevering canopy to yep. its most ideal, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And yet, it stands up, and as you were saying to me on the phone last night, it provides shade, it provides uh, comfort, it uh, provides evaporative cooling from its leaves, and you really can't improve on it a great deal, except that it is not impervious to rain. And that's something that we need to do when we build canopies, is to protect ourselves from rain, or in your case in Germany, snow. Mm -hmm. That's true. So um, let's make this really popular, DeSoto, right? Let's okay. use someone that everyone knows is right. associated to our islands, and we have been working with him before. Right. Um, Picture number two. For uh, getting people excited. So get number two. And there he is. And there is the very youthful Barack Obama when he was a young man in school. And the two views of the building you see are the Punahou Circle Apartments, and that was a building that was built in the late 1960s. And that's where Barack Obama grew up, and that's where he lived when he was attending Punahou School until his graduation in 1979. And the front canopy of the Punahou Circle Apartments, as we see here in this slide, is this wonderful zigzag kooky looking canopy that shades people as they are coming in and out of the main entrance off of King Street or Baratania Street, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we get to the next picture, actually one of the first when we started collecting and sharing uh, objects and, and canopies, uh, the very uh, top left one is the one you shared with me first because you drove by it. This is the bowling uh, alley in Kahala. And you said, look at that one, and it won't be there anymore for much longer because it will be demolished. And if I understood you correctly, by now is demolished. So yes, it has been. What we want to make clear and get people excited about is don't demolish these because these are really, really unique. Me, as a practicing architect, as my other side, I can tell you there's probably no way with the wages and material being so expensive, Hawaii being my, one of the most expensive places to build, in the US and in, in the world, you cannot spend that dedication and passion anymore. So the second part of that picture is another one that's existing, that's on King Street. Correct. And so our plenary already up front of it is keep these. That's right. Right? And, and, and these canopies, although in different places, one on the Wiley Bowl building from 1958 and the other on the King Center building on King Street from the 19, early 1960s, they both have this very sort of upthrust corners. They've got support legs that are canted at an angle, and then the corners of both of these go up dramatically, and they're pretty eccentric looking, and that was what was popular back in those days. But as you said to me last night as well, 
there can be a use for this in that you can direct rainfall to go to a specific area to either drip off or go into a drain by using these forms, which, um, as I said at the beginning of the show, are playful and eccentric and um, something that you could not replicate today, so something we really need to pay attention to and want to preserve. Mm -hmm. And that specific one on King Street started to remind us of some exotic, so non-native influence right. culture, like the Mandarin pavilion of the of the Asian architecture. Correct. That's right. And, and that then, gets us to the next picture, which introduces uh, um, an example uh, of nature, which is very exotic, although we quite excessively discussed, um, uh, right. you know, where these come from. These are palm trees, but right. I, I love the uh, version of the coconut palm tree, who is uh, an exotic species that comes from Asia and then, you know, can populate itself by its seed being the coconut floating through the ocean for thousands and thousands of miles, making landfall where no other plant can thrive and grow roots in the sand. Right. And ever since, they're the symbol of tropical exotic right. islands. Right. So, so coming to the hospitality industry, which uh, runs... Uh, our industry, and this reminds me of my uh, dear friend Suzanne, who uh, is here with me in Germany and uh, studied that in Hawaii, in fact. And we talked about that quite a bit, about that exotic appeal. Correct. And so here we have a blend, a combination of this exotic artifact and the artificial artifact of canopy and how they can marry, right? Correct. And this is in Waikiki. This is at the end of Lure Street at Kalia Road. And it today is over a Denny's restaurant. This building was built in the 1960s as well. There's a zigzag canopy, again, an eccentric type of form, but it's got holes in it for palm trees to grow through. And what that meant was that at the time the canopy was constructed, there were already palm trees growing there, which they built around and accommodated in their building. And uh, as you can see in this picture, the, the hotel is called the Imperial Hawaii Resort. It's one of the Imperial Hawaii Resorts, but well before there was such a brand name, this building was built. And it too is one of the surviving canopies that we want to maybe make people aware of and so that they have some awareness of and appreciation of them. Mm -hmm. And they did this all over the place. This was really, really popular. Next picture, number five, this is Alamoana Moa, right? Correct. And this was when Ala Moana Center was built in 1959. They actually brought palm trees to the site, planted them, and then constructed the mall level parking around them. So in this picture at the top is the, there's also a zigzag canopy outside the Sears store. And the palm trees were planted. They were tall enough at that time to extend up through essentially two levels of the shopping center. And subsequent to this picture that we're looking at here where you can see both levels, uh, the picture below that, you can see that when the mall was completed, all you saw on the upper level when you were parking on the mall outside Sears were just the crowns of these palm trees standing in front of yet another zigzag canopy popular at that time, which, as I said, was 1959. Mm -hmm. And this project, unfortunately, as some say, me including, uh, included, is that uh, is not existing anymore Correct. and been replaced by something less exotic. And that also applies to the next picture, which is your favorite building, which shows that in the category of zigzag, you can either apply it to a, a canopy, so a part of a building, or you can apply it to an entire building. And which building is this one we're looking this at, is, Soto? This is the Waikiki Beach Center, which was a changing room and showering facility for both men and women. There were, there were bathrooms and changing facilities in this structure. There were also surfboard racks connected to it. It was a very angular structure. It was on Kuhio Beach, and it's about where the Duke Hanamoku statue is today. And so it existed from about 1961 up until ooh, by maybe about the 1990s. And the entire roof line of this structure is zigzagged. It goes way up in this very sharp point. But as Martin likes to say, the, the beauty of this is it's entirely open to the weather. So mm -hmm. it isn't closed off. It, got, it gets trade winds going through it. It gets maybe some rain sometimes. But basically, it's open to the air which is appropriate for Waikiki, where you're out enjoying the warm sunshine and the warm beach. 
Exactly, and staying in Waikiki and just a little over and still existing is the next picture. This is Foster Tower, and the second, uh, the left part of the picture is donated by our fellow Don Hibbert, who wrote about us in his fantastic book, uh, Designing Paradise. And he says in the caption here, how can you sort of make a concrete box look appealing to a tourist? And he says, by putting a surfer in front of it, so riding on a wave, and the wave is also a literal architectural means at the bottom of the building, which you can see on the right part of the, of the picture here, where once again, a crazy canopy, and we're introducing another way of it, which is the wavy uh, crazy cantilevering. And if you guys walk by, which you please do, you see something strange, which is that the palm trees don't grow through the holes anymore, but the holes are still there. Correct. And, again, and that also said, applies to the, to the next project, next picture number eight, where the entire building is not existing anymore. And this is a, this is a Pete Wimbledy project, who is probably our exotic master, who we touched on uh, a couple times already in the previous shows, right? And with good reason, too. Let's move on to number nine, where we see another variation of that theme, having palm trees growing through roofs, and sometimes not single you know, uh, tailored uh, holes for the trunk, but the bigger ones, sort of courtyard-likes. Yeah, right. Which also applies to number 10. And which project is that, Soto? Well, what we see here are two shopping centers. We see the Kalihi Shopping Center in the large picture from 1955-56, and then we see Ala Moana Shopping Center in 1959. And in both cases, we've got a hole in the roof, which not only lets in the air and lets in the light, and allows people to see the sky and the clouds and so forth, but it also allows plants to grow underneath those open holes so that you don't have a entirely concrete expanse, but you've got some greenery in there as well, which is part of the experience of making things nicer for pedestrians and for shoppers. Mm -hmm. And that's like, especially Ala Moana Mall prides itself and sells itself as being the world's largest uh, outdoor shopping mall, which right. certainly applies to the circulation, but these days, unfortunately, not so much anymore to the shops. They're all AC'd, and then people have the doors open and blow the AC outside, which always drives me crazy, <laughs> talking crazy right. topic of the show here today. But this is these are the good days. These are the, the, the pre-fossil era. And um, so embracing the outdoors, celebrating the outdoors is a theme. And in this hole, you can see that it's basically a rectilinear hole, but then uh, the corners get soft edged. So right. some, some soft, some more organic form is introduced. And that gets us to number 11, where some architects have been getting excited about that one, like um, this project here, which, which is a diner which you told me last night that um, when we prepped that this is uh, not necessarily specific to Hawaii. This no. is actually the whole diner architecture streamline era was really popular in California. So one state over, it was brought to Hawaii and also seemed, you know, pretty fittingly here because once again, as you said, it provides us with a necessary shelter for rain and sun. Correct. But to go to the next picture, number 12, you can also apply it to a building more uh, more enjoyably, as this roof here is a hyper paraboloidic roof, where you know you can almost look at the building and saying this the whole building is a hat. It looks like a hat. Yeah, and a hat we probably could have used as another a familiar to people device as to basically provide the same for your hat. Yeah. Page. And right. rain protection. Yeah, we've got two pictures here. We've got one small picture of the uh, hyperparaboloid, um, whatever the heck it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the, it's the uh, lobby of the Waikikian Hotel, which opened in 1956. Okay. Really extreme curvature. And then below that, the big picture is Motor Imports Company, which is located on Kapilani Boulevard, and it sold imported cars. And that's a Toyo pet car in front of it in 1959. And this lower one, the big one, looks like a Pringles potato chip. It's the same type of curvature, but it's applied on a grand scale to an entire building. And that's not something that you're going to see anymore, I don't really think. That's a great analogy to soda. I will use that. And let's go to the next picture. I have the same crispy feel about that canopy yep. here. That's crunchy and just so 
you know, really good chips are thin and crunchy, right? Yes. Yes. So this canopy looks like that too. It's just the, the minimal use of material, once again, used to something to give shade to cars. So, you know, tourists came to Hawaii wanting to enjoy the exotic, the raw, the jungle, so to speak, but didn't want to stay away, want to go without their comfort, their American comfort, right? So he really used this excessively in, in different typologies. And number the next picture, number 14, is such a thing as well, where you just want to provide shade and rain protection for something you want to display. Right. And you come up with this, this is maybe our craziest here, right? Where you just cantilever, uh, off-centered, asymmetrical. That's more crazy than a tree because a tree balances itself out. Right. There's, there's branches on both sides. Right. Whereas this one is going only to one direction. This Correct. is crazy. And this is, this is a kind of a showroom for heavy equipment, forklifts, bulldozers, and things like that, which is located on Sand Island Access Road in the early 60s. And what we see here is this floating disc, which has this off-center support on the left, two very skinny little poles on the right to cover up a bulldozer, which is on display for sale. And that was a specifically, as you said, made so that you could see the object, in this case, the bulldozer, from all sides. You didn't want to cover it up. You wanted people to pass by and say, oh, look, I want to buy that bulldozer. Well, it's on exhibit, and that's what you can do. Mm -hmm. So as we're on to something here, uh, this is some research, you know, a serious research topic. And when you get, get serious about it, then you can see there's these different ways of doing it. So another one we want to look at is in the next picture and this is going back to Ella Moana in its heydays and its, its original easy breezy nice days and when you look closer you can see that the post the column once it starts to become the roof it's actually like looks like it's organically growing yeah. into the roof and yeah. we call that the mushroom system correct and in addition to introducing this structural methodology you see the perforations again punching the hole through and this combination makes it really really delightful and pleasurable very yeah. creative very sexy yeah now we can keep going with this mushroom analogy of a single stalk supporting uh, a roof and i think in our next picture which is bishop museum which is where i work let's go to that and this is the bishop museum planetarium when it opened in 1961 and it has a support that's very mushroom like as well but you pointed out that this is really copied from frank lloyd wright's famous johnson wax building of the late 1930s which had a series of columns like this supporting a roof over a, a common office area that was uh, like a translucent light in, uh, uh, illuminated roof open to the to the sun and so here we see it some years later used here in the Hawaiian Islands as sort of another mushroom type of thing mm hmm absolutely when we think about the most popular uh, example of what we're talking about we go to the next picture that's probably our ca our capital yeah and our capital is also using the the mushroom uh, principle pretty much in detail and the, the picture i took on the right side of that 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 photo here is um that when you when you move back and look at it from the distance because the um, so sort of proportionally the the post is so tiny is so thin that it basically almost gets invisible so you end up just like with a tree when you look at a tree from a distance you don't see the trunk you just see the canopy so it starts to float and this is this is rather spectacular and and once again it uh, i cannot tell you how excited i was when i was part of the 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 walks and the demonstrations uh, around the the last presidential election and and the dynamics and the civic you know, power and pride of that building, which is which is absolutely amazing. I mean, a, a demonstration of of democracy, I, I hardly ever felt before, and you know, achieved by what we're talking about, by this architectural methodology and 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 and, and yeah, and just a very good good way of of just doing the most with the least which i think and, we have we, we we we're well advised to look back into in the future when we design buildings 
and that and well, that also to resembles the next picture a, here, uh, which is. Uh, you know, um, it looks similar, but it's a different typology. This this is a bank, right. and look how playful banks have been designed yes. in the past. And yes. once again, being so generous to provide outdoor space, so this is not the interior space when you get the money from the people and right. you just you know and then make them go away. This is like this is this is saying, hey, come in, be welcomed. You know, stay comfortable, stay outside. And when you look at it more detailed, you can see a refinement here of that there isn't the mushroom top anymore, but there's something we call treetop. This is right. literally borrowed from nature. Yes. Where once again, you see like the beams, you know, becoming like branches on a, on Absolutely. a tree. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they really flow in a kind of organic way. And I was going to say in the state, of, in the situation of the state capitol, those columns and the way they grow at the top look like a palm tree. This looks like a, a palm tree or a t another type of tree as well in the way it is structured. Mm -hmm. And our master, our structurally engineered master, we see on number 19. And I had the chance to still meet the fabulous, fantastic Dr. Alfred Yi who unfortunately passed away not long ago, and he is the creator of so many of these crazy cantilevers, amongst them the project on the left, and which one is that, DeSoto? Uh, that's the treetops. We need to go to the next, uh, we need to go, there it is. That's the treetops uh, condominium or apartment building in Waikiki, which I believe has been demolished. But it, again, is, is extremely unusual in that these horizontal elements come projecting out and sometimes they support a balcony and sometimes they just stick out. So sometimes they're part of a, of a canopy and sometimes they're just um, elements that stick out on their own that rest upon another uh, horizontal member that you can see very clearly there in the mm -hmm. photograph on the left. Well, let's and bring this, this up to so date. this is so exciting for people like me coming from the cold part of the world uh, where, especially in, in times of uh, extreme energy efficiency uh, in the built environment to save our planet, uh, we cannot do things like that anymore. We have to thermally connect uh, elements once they project out from the inside to the outside, while at the same time they obviously have to be structurally connected, so thermally disconnected, structurally connected. So. This is this is a, a, a true uh, you know uh, this is special that we can do this in Hawaii and I don't think in recent years we have we have done this enough but we did it mid century so a political for that is to do it again correct and the next two pictures is uh, how I demonstrate how uh, excited uh, you know me and my uh, firm is about is about that so the next picture number twenty is a community grocery store we did so many years ago where the property line is actually following the facade at the bottom of the on the picture of the right but we wanted to can't leave her out so here we go and we had to go through some serious you know significant effort in order to do that in fact here the client has to pay some money to the city uh, because he can't leave resolver so there's some real passion for cantilevering right and the next picture is a, a more recent project, the urban waterfall canopy for a subway in the city of Bochum. And it actually uh, introduces another materiality because so far we have predominantly been talking about concrete or a lot. Uh, concrete uh, in the tropics is very attractive because it doesn't corrode versus steel. However, there's some nice examples of crazy steel canopies and we want to take a chance here to also refer back to a, to some shows we've done in the past for people to maybe revisit. And number 22 is one of these. And where is that, DeSoto? Well, let me look at this. This is uh, Rainbow Drive-In. Rainbow Drive-In, in our next picture, is located in Kapahulu. And you talked to the owner of Rainbow Drive-In about the canopy that they use there, which not only is um, decorative, but it also uh, generates electricity. Does it not? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, it is absolutely. And we want to say hi to, you pointed out to, um, to Jim Gusakuma, hi Jim, uh, that he's very much, you know, reconnecting to this crazy tradition of these cantilevers and canopies. 
And what we didn't know, and he even didn't know, although it's down the road, that's number 23, and I drive by there on my daily bicycle commute to work, and I always saw this canopy, and one day I saw the owner of the building, and I approached her, and she said, yeah, that was my crazy dad building that, and he was a structural engineer. So this is a, this is a canopy in front of her residence, and only if you really pay close attention, which I try to share with you and having done this close up at the top left, you can actually see the, the roof is not touching that wall on the left. So it's in fact sitting on these toothpick spaghetti skin, using analogy, you know, to food. You talked about the, the crispy chips, yes, you know, yeah. this is this is spaghettis. And it's, it's just amazing. I, I can tell you, if I go to a structural engineer these days talking about, you know, exceeding wind loads and hurricanes and seismic loads, probably pretty impossible to do this yeah. again. So this yeah. is another keeper. Right. And it's supported entirely on the right. It is not supported on the left. So in this picture, you see those, as you said, those two V-shaped spaghetti-like supports. That's the only thing that holds up this entire roof. And it is a crazy exactly. canopy. Totally. So, so to, to build crazy canopies, on our exotic, easy breezy islands of Hawaii is possible. Number 24, our very inaugural show of human domain architecture is uh, Les is Lanai. So this is on Maui. You guys can look back into the show and he, and he did it. And another one of our favorite guests is number 25 is Nathan Toothman. Hi, Nathan. Nathan's elevate structure is a fine example of contemporary crazy cantilevering canopies. And he is currently in California. It's probably time to do another show. At the bottom left, you can see his uh, very recent uh, CNC and, and prototype version of that. And uh, getting close to the end of the show, last but not at all least, looking at our merging generation. And this is also a previous uh, guest, um, Chris Chiguetta, who was talking about uh, another project, but in this case here, this is a project he did with my uh, colleague Wendy Maguro and uh, now some years ago, which you can see the young generation getting excited about that thing, yeah. crazy cantilevering canopies. Right, which is fantastic because it isn't just a thing of the past, it's something that's applicable today, it's something that deserves to be brought back today, and as I said, it's not just because it provides actual use, but it's crazy, it's kooky, it's fun, and it's something that kind of excites our lives and adds a little bit of interest to things. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, just plain boxes. Well, all right. So we let's go. do it again. Let's do it again. Well, I think that is going to bring us to the end of uh, yet another human humane architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. And we were joined by our host Martin Despang in speaking to us from Germany, and I am Desoto Brown, the co-host, speaking to you from here in Honolulu. And two weeks from now, we will be back with our show. And what's going to be our show that time, Martin? Oh, that's super exciting because this is a project that's going to transform as well. This is the Blaisdell Arena. And in many ways, it has a lot to do with what we've been talking about today. Yes, it does. So it's going to be the past of the Blaisdell Center and the future of the Blaisdell Center. And Martin's going to make some recommendations for that. So. Until uh, our next Think Tech show, um, I'll say, uh, Martin will say aloha from Germany and I'll say aloha from here in Honolulu. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>